Hello again. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, before we go any further with the EFL Weekly, welcome to a live EFL Weekly. And we're going to be doing these week. We're going to do these live now. From now on in. Uh, first of all, can I just say it's a great pleasure now after 19, after nearly three months away live streaming on YouTube, I'm finally back, and uh, you won't believe for what a relief that is to be back on YouTube. Thank you to Twitch for letting me do the commentaries or giving me the facilities to do the commentaries, but all live football now will be back here live on YouTube for everybody to enjoy for the rest of the season. So, and Twitch has served its purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, we're now working full time again back on YouTube and it's really lovely to be back doing a live video on YouTube. So I'm really pleased that that's the case. And I'm delighted and uh, fantastic. And before everyone asks, yes, I've been enjoying my holiday. It's been fantastic and I've had some great news personally, but it's not. But to be quite honest with you, that's not why I'm here. And uh, um, as you will have seen, um, um, Berry Football Club, what a sad day on Wednesday when it was announced that uh, Berry Football Club, a club that's been going for 135 years at the hub of the community up there, unfortunately has been expelled from the Football League. It is a really sad state of affairs. Um, and tonight, really, in this half hour EFL weekly special, we ask who's to blame for this? Is it the EFL for not being strict enough on their fit and proper person to test? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it Steve Dale for running the club into so much debt and ruin? that they couldn't get out of it or his ignorance to sell the club what, two or three weeks ago when there was an, op an opportunity to. Um, there's so many factors that you could uh, put into it. It's really heartbreaking. The people I feel sorry for are is for the people who support Barry, the people who have been involved in the club. I mean, what, what Steve Dale has done to this football club is destroy a club with 135 years of rich history behind it. Family member of the Football League, twice winners of the FA Cup back in 1900 and 1903. You know, this was a team just so, um, less than 20 years ago playing in the top, in the second tier of English football against the likes of Sunderland, Manchester City, Birmingham. All these big teams, middles, you know, all these sort of big teams, and here they are now expelled because of the previous owner and Steve Dale himself. I mean, I think Steve Dale is a very, very callous and horrible man. For what he has done to this club, he's had the players, he's also the players to consider as well. You feel sorry for the fans more. Often or not, they don't have a team to support now, which is sad. So there's Saturday afternoons now. I could tell forever. The players, of course, the existing players now have lost. Have lost their jobs. Some of them have lost. Have can't pay their mortgages and have been thrown out their home now. Their captain has just lost his house. And what does Steve Dale do? What does Steve Dale say to that? He, he would just give two fingers up and still say stuff, yeah. I couldn't give him damn. It's just wrong. The whole thing is a complete charade. And you guys can have your say in the comments section. Uh, I'd be delighted to hear from you. So, perhaps of Ross or Mike, or I know are very good, uh, are very keen on the lower leagues. They've been across it on their respective Facebook pages this week. Uh, um, I haven't been as active as I usually am because the Wi-Fi in Blackpool has not been too good. So, um, so I've not been as active on social media about it than as I usually would. Um, so apologies for that. But it's really sad. I mean, I mean, I know Berry. It's a town. It's a bit like Burnley. 
from where, obviously where I'm from on the Burnley fam. I mean, I could have chosen the EFL Cup and ranked about Burnley's pathetic performance against Sunderland. But it, it's irrelevant considering what Bury now have just lost in a football club. It's a football town. You, you, you're dealing with 120 odd years of history. Two FA Cup wins, several lower league, league titles. You know, they've won, 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 you know, they've had a decent little history, you know. And as I said, 20 years ago, they're in the second tier of the of the football league, of the league pyramid. Under Stan, Stan Turner, before he went on, achieved similar success at Burnley. So you look at you look at where the club's been run. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I mean, I, I, I must at this point as well, just before we move on with Barry, I must say, well done for Bolton Wanderers as well. At least their legacy is still going to be intact. That was a club that was also on the brink of distinction as well, from the, you know, of going under as well. But uh, thankfully, they found the buyer. As well, but uh, and uh, their rich history as well stays intact. Ken Anderson finally sold up the other night, having been given a 14 day deadline to get a deal done. And they've, they've sold it now, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, the worst times are rolling up for Bolton Wanderers. But I doubt it's a little consolation to the people of Bury right now. They're, they're a small town on the outskirts of Greater Manchester, you know. It's a lovely town. I've been lucky enough to visit there on countless occasions. And uh, it's it's got wrenching to see them to see the club go under because when you're a small town like a Bury, or to a certain extent Burnley, I mean we've done well to get into the Premier League and we're gonna be playing Liverpool to uh, by we will still we'll be finishing off our match against Liverpool this time tomorrow, but which, you know, several years ago, you were 15, 16 years ago, you would not have thought possible. So, you know, we've got to be thankful for that. We've always done well, punched above our weight. Barry have always done well, punching above their weight. But obviously, they haven't picked the right owners. I feel sorry for the Nevilles. I mean, their late father, Neville, Neville, and that's, and that's his actual, and that was his actual name was a director for over 20 odd years. He'd be turning his grave right now. He's, he's, uh, his widow, Jill Neville, has been the secretary for about 30 years or something like that. And of course, Gary and Phil Neville, big fans when they were growing up before they hit the heights with Manchester United. And, uh, and you know, so was, you know, Bury's a great town and the people of Bury are going to be so upset tonight. They've been so upset. And it's really bleak. And as I was saying on my companion page, my companion Facebook page, it's most I was away in Blackpool for a week. I've been in Blackpool for a week. And uh, it's it's bitterly, bitterly upsetting to see where the club is now. It's, it's in a, you know, I mean, expelled from the Football League. It just doesn't bear thinking about. It is so, so disappointing. And if you... If you look at the way the club has been, bro, it's been... It's, I, I'm, I'm so, so disappointed because I look at this now and think, what, what else could they have done I mean, what could have been done to save Berry Football Club? I mean, there's got to be some explanation as to why it's uh, why it's all gone horribly wrong. And in a lot of respects, I think the EFL have to take some accountability for what's happened. I think. Steve Dale, the chairman. I also think I, have, I think he has to take a lot of the blame himself. I just think there's a lot of people that need blaming. Does, does, does every, I mean, there are three other bids on the table. Could the EFL give them another stay of execution of 72 hours at least, even to get a deal done? 
you know, they granted exclusivity with one of the with one of the buyers. They pulled out because they couldn't prove the due diligence or whatever they call it. Real sad. To be fair, it's a real sad state of affairs, if I'm being honest. And uh, I think I think Steve Delman needs to be blamed because I don't think he cared enough about the club. He was in, a custodian of when you're an owner of the club or you're the chairman of a football club. You have to be a custodian of that club. You have to be on the ball, running that club top to bottom, deck to deck, 24-7. That's the sign of a good owner, a good chairman, and making sure it's run properly. Steve Dell never had a clue. And here's the reason why. First and foremost, he's a very, very dodgy businessman. Why do I say, and I use the word dodgy, dodgy, very strongly. And I mean that. I don't mean that as any disrespect to Steve Dale himself. But the reason I say dodgy is because he's had 51 different businesses in his business career over the last God knows how many years. Out of 51 businesses, a whopping 43 I've been liquidated or I've gone under. It just shows, doesn't it? it? Just shows what a he doesn't obviously he's not fit even to be a businessman, let alone the chairman of a football club of a town he, he never liked being in. He confessed it to him in a radio interview with Tony Lipsey that he'd never been to Berry or stepped foot in Berry all his life and you know, it just shows the just shows the idiot that he really has been turned out to be. And I can understand Barry fans having a right pop at him because if he was Burnley's chairman, I can bet your heart I could bet you most of Burnley's supporters, the fan base at Burnley would absolutely lynch mobbing like Game of Thrones, lynch him, lynch him, lynch him and his beard. I think that's what Berry should be doing to Steve Dale. If he steps into Berry, he knows he'll get lynch mobbed through the streets of Berry right now because he, to a lot of Berry fans, he will be the man that's responsible. And quite rightly so, by the way, he'll be the man that's destroyed this grand, grand old football club. So he's got to take the blame. And then there's the EFL themselves, the Football League. I think. I mean, Debbie Jones, to be fair to her, you know, says that the fit and proper person's policy they've got at the moment is obviously not fit for purpose. It never was fit for purpose, is the truth. Um, how can they let a man... And then Ken, you've got people like Ken Anderson and, and obviously Dale himself. You know, you look at these people that have come into football clubs, you know, and... And the, the EFL have just not been have just not been good enough or been brave enough to challenge these in the fit and you know a fit and proper person's test. How can he have passed a, a fit and proper person's test? It's just it just ain't on. It's just not on. And I find I find that amazing that that you know they need to be more strenuous. In their fit and proper person's test. I, I really do. I said it in Blackpool the other day. I stick by what I said. And I warned, we've warned Steve Dale. People have, you know, people have very warned Steve Dale. There'll be, there'll be a backlash if the club went under. Well, it has gone under. It's been expelled. But if the EFL had been on the ball six to eight months ago by making the the fit and proper person's test for prospective new armors or chairman to take charge of a football club or take over the day-to-day -day running of a football club at board level, I can bet your bottoms are Berry or Bolton would not be in the messes they were there now. So especially Berry. I mean, Bolton are fine. They're safe. They have been saved. But it's a real sad state of affairs that um, 
a club with over 130 years of history, two FA Cups to their name in the early 20th century, has now probably ceased to exist as a league club. Will they come back as a Phoenix club like Akron Stanley did all those years ago? They went under in 62, resigned from the league. Uh, Maidstone did the same. They're coming back as well. They're, they've been in the conference and in and out. Stanley, Akron Stanley are back in League One now as a reformed club. So they work their way back up to the top. It's a real sad state of affairs when you look at it, really. It's, uh, it's disappointing, really. But there you go. It's the... Sometimes it's the nature of football, but Steve Dale has to take responsibility. The EFL, if they're going to, rep- they need to stop. If they're going to want an avoidance of a repeat performance of the last few months, they need to get more stringent, more stricter with the the fit and proper persons test because it has not been stringent enough. Because that's what this existing system is doing is allowing idiots like Ken Anderson idiots like Steve Dale to run football clubs and run them into the ground practically. It's not right. And it can't be right. And the people I feel sorry for in Barry tonight are the fans, the people that have worked at the club and it's and you know, people have been there spent all their working lives at the club. You you're talking teen ladies, secretarial staff. Backroom staff, a lot of them have spent a lot of, a, a lot of their working lives at that football club. And they're all out of a job, as I said earlier in the stream. The Bury, the, the Bury captain has lost his home because Steve Dale did not pay the wages and could not, have, or could not be bothered to pay the wages. He has run that football club into the ground. It is a joke. It is an utter, utter joke. And it really is. I'm so, so disappointed. It's not the sort of video I wanted to be doing live for, for my first live back on YouTube, but it had to be said. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that he's saying from me. I will leave it up to you guys in the comment section down below to, to mull over and digest and get your feedback on it all. You know what I think of it. It stinks to high heaven that a club like Berry with such a rich history as a great law league club, twice winners of the FA Cup in the early 20th centuries in 1900 and 1903, to, to have that ripped away, all that history ripped away, a football club ripped away from its community, its fans. And, let's, let, and I'll finish on this final point. The town has died. And it's one of the most beautiful towns you'll see. I mean, it's, it's got character. It's like Rochdale. It's like Oldham in that area. I've been to all three towns, and I'm obviously I, I go to Oldham quite a lot because it's a lot of my friends are up. Some of my friends are up there. But I've been to Bury, and it's a great town. It's like Oldham. It's got a great community spirit. It's got character. It's got, you know, it's got. Great and determination. It's got the best market, I think, in the country. We know to show them that if you've never been to Berry Market, you've never lived. And yet, all that business could now die because of the football. And, and the economy in Berry is going to suffer the most. Businesses are going to close down. The economy, people aren't going to think of Berry as a great town anymore. Now that the football club's been run out of business. Steve Dale has not just destroyed Berry Football Club, it's destroyed Berry as a town. And that is a disgrace. People like Steve Dale should not be breathing on this planet. If that's a, if that's the sort of businessman he is, then I think he ought to look in the mirror and maybe find an occupation that's more suited to his needs. Maybe a pot washing job would be more suitable for somebody like him. Or maybe playing the part of Captain Burzai with his ridiculous beard and Christ knows what. But, you know, I hope if he ever comes, if he ever starts, uh, if he ever starts, steps foot in Bury, then I think he needs to be lynch mobbed or maybe just put on, maybe they should stick him, maybe they should execute him. Maybe that's going a bit too far, but you know, they should lynch mob him, torture him for what he has done for Berry Football Club 
and has destroyed a terrific football club, a terrific community over there. It's a, it was a great community club destroyed by one man. And then the AFL have got to take some responsibility for letting the South take control in the first place. Disgraceful. I've said my piece on it. So over to you guys now. What do you think of uh, the news that Barry have gone under? I know a lot of you will have had your say, but you can have a say on this tonight. Let me know in the comments below. Um, um, we'll touch, try and touch on it a bit more during our live matches, which is now back on YouTube. Uh, one game I can hopefully, hopefully we'll have the Tottenham match, for Tottenham Arsenal match this, uh, this weekend as well. I'm hoping that Southampton Manchester United will be featured tomorrow as well in great detail. Um, we'll try and stream at least two live matches from the Premier League live on YouTube. Uh, all the other commentaries tomorrow. So you guys can listen now. now. Obviously, there's an international break, but we'll be focusing on England for the next week or so. And then it'll be back later in September with the football again. So that's it from me. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Um, and to the people, and I just want to end with this final message. People are very chin up. Stay strong. Hopefully you'll get your football club back and hopefully things will work out better for that great football club. Hopefully. You know, uh, but it's not looking great. I expel from a football league. It's a disgrace. It's a tragedy for football. And, um, you know, great as great as the news is for Bolton, it's great to see them stay in the football league and stay as a football club. I'm really, my heart, my heart's sinking for very people, for people of Bury right now. I don't know how they must be feeling, but it's, it's, it's a tragedy for the town of Bury. They rely on the football club for the economy in the town, so my heart goes out to them. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make, give your opinion in the comment section below. I'm sure a lot of you will do. Um, it's very disappointing to see a great club like Bury go on the founding member of the Football League and twice when there's the FA Cup. Destroyed by a man who is a callous, cold-hearted businessman, failed businessman, he can have a well, he can have a fifty, he can have a forty-fourth liquidation to that list. Now, obviously, with Berry, who shows how dodgy a businessman Steve Dale really is. And it makes me glad that we haven't got somebody like that at Black or Burnley, because if they did, the lynch mob there, the suicide squad would be out with them in absolute droves. But I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, for some live uh, commentary football. Back on YouTube after a three-month absence. We are back live on YouTube now. That's the good news anyway. So for me, JB, have a fantastic evening. See you over the weekend for some live stream, uh, for some live audio commentaries live on YouTube. And until then, take care. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.